Secrets and lies will put any relationship on the fast track to ruin. On today's case, Ms. Mitchell says her fiance, Mr. McDonald's dirty secrets and constant lies have made her second guess accepting his marriage proposal. She says broken promises, impromptu business trips, and voicemails with erotic poetry are more than enough reasons for her to end things with Mr. McDonald. And she's ready to move on. Can Mr. McDonald convince her that he's on the level and save this relationship? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Mitchell versus McDonald. Thank you. Ms. Mitchell, you say that after years of broken promises, you're here to set yourself free from Mr. McDonald's lies and manipulations. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. McDonald, you say you didn't sign up for the drama and say it's time for Ms. Mitchell to leave her insecurities in the past once and for all. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this is a relationship that was supposed to be moving towards marriage, as I understand it. Why are we in court today, Ms. Mitchell? I brought my fiance, Thomas, here to divorce court because I'm tired of the head games. Thomas promised me a perfect life, perfect family, and ever since we got engaged, it's been nothing but drama, and all the promises that he made to me have been broken. He's become very controlling. This Jersey girl keeps popping up, so that leads me to believe that he's cheating on me, mm -hmm. and I feel trapped in this relationship, and I'm just ready to get what's owed to me and be done. It's interesting. Get what's owed to her and be done. Did you hear what she said, Mr. McDonald? Yes, I did. How do you defend yourself? Your Honor, I'm here to fight for this relationship because I don't plan on being without her anymore. I don't want to be without her. Because when I met her, I didn't even think I could love again from past experiences, so... Mm-hmm. I want her to be with me. So this is your person, as they like to say. This is the one. Yes. That's your person. She, yes, ma'am. You all have uh, been together for four years, engaged for just over a year. You do live together now, but you have no children. So this is the time in a relationship where you really do make the determination if you are going forward, taking it to the next level, or if you're going to end it. Am I correct, Ms. Mitchell? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me a little bit about how you all met and why you say this controlling nature of him has brought you to court today. Yes, I met Thomas four years ago. I was working at HR. Um, I was content with my life, making good money, taking care of me and my kids. I have kids on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, I was having a stressful day at work, so I went and I took myself out just to get away from the office, and I took myself out to lunch. Self-care, I like that. Most definitely. And while I'm sitting at the bar, Thomas walks in. He sits down a couple chairs for me, and he sparks up a conversation. Like I said, I was stressed, so I indulged and, you know, gave him conversation just as a distraction. As it went on, I liked the conversation. Of course, he's handsome. And things just kind of, you know, he gave me his number. He's older, but he didn't give me weird vibes when he gave me his number. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we... He didn't act like the creepy uncle at the most, club. He, at the cookout. He didn't mm -hmm. do that. You know what I mean? So I gave him my number. We started seeing each other more, going out a few times. So you all actually dated? Yes. Wonderful. Mr. McDonald, how was the dating in the beginning? It was, it was great. You know, we met at the taco spot I like to go to on lunch and saw her sitting at the bar, so she was very attractive. So I just walked mm -hmm. up to her and started talking. Because y'all make a nice looking couple. Thank you. So she told me she was having a bad day, so I tried to make a laugh, you know, about lunch and uh, we exchanged numbers. Mm -hmm. But I didn't expect, you know, the need for it to happen, but love just happened. So, you know, because I've been divorced and I was trying not to go through that path again, you know? Mm -hmm. So. It just happened, you can't control love, and that's what happened. Now, how long after uh, you all started dating did this relationship move to the next level, which means you all started living together? Um, it was about a year, so we, you know, so you got actually to know took each other. your time, most definitely. Mm hmm. We, uh, you know, got to know each other first, and then six months after that, we started dating. Six months after dating, we moved in. So okay. A full year. All right. So this is one of the few couples at divorce court that you all actually went through a process. Yes, ma'am. To see if you were compatible. Yes, ma'am. So congratulations on going through the process. <laughs> so what the heck went wrong? You were this successful. Wonderful, independent, self-sufficient lady, moving in, ready to start your life. What happened? Okay, moving in with Thomas, he wanted me to quit my job. Why? 
to control me as we are here today. And I'm knowing now back then it was more of him just saying he wanted to take care of me, wanted to pay all the bills, you know, and give me the perfect life. But that wasn't a part of my perfect life. My perfect life was just me, my kids, my husband, perfect house, and, you know, just being happy. But you do realize that the perfect life really does start with self. Most you, you have to bring your whole self to any relationship. Mm -hmm. I just don't know very, very many families, unless your last name is Bezos, <laughs> that you could just chill. Just, uh -huh. I just, I didn't... Everybody usually has to bring double income in the crib. Robert, double, double income, income in the crib, right? Maybe three I didn't three make incomes. her quit a <laughs> job. I just suggested it because she was stressed out. That's now, right. I understand that, yeah. that, but that usually means get no. a different job. No, ma'am. Go no, right ahead. Uh -oh. Definitely bug me. Bugged me and pressured me to quit my job. So, oh, in other he words, he set to... a situation in motion that made you believe that financially you all could do this and on his income. Of. Yes, ma'am. But then how did it become controlling, Ms. Mitchell? <sighs> okay, so after I quit my job, we basically said that we wanted to move into a nicer place together. Uh-oh, so y'all financial plan, and I like right. this. So... We talked about it, and we came to the conclusion that we'll start saving $100 a week each and putting it into an account, where the account was in Thomas's name. That was your first mistake. That was my first mistake. So... If you're doing something together, why isn't it, it both people's names? Most definitely. Tell me why. With him, it was a controlling thing, but then I'm letting him take the lead. I don't mind being submissive and things like that. I don't but... either, but why isn't your name on the money? Because he convinced me that, you know, he would go and do it. I think I was busy that day. That's not an excuse. I just think I was busy that day, and mm -hmm. I let him go and do it because at that time I did trust him enough to say, okay, hey, here it is, and I know we're doing this together. He didn't give me any controlling vibes then. You got no uh-oh feelings. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. So you know I'm going to ask all the questions <laughs> that's going to make you uncomfortable and make you look down and go, I can't believe I did all this. Because guess what? You're about to tell me, uh-oh, right? Uh-oh. He left his phone on the nightstand, and I picked it up, and I went through. Okay, Inspector Gadget. Here we go again. I see a text message, and I saw emojis being used that you should be using those emojis with me. And he told me that it was a colleague from work. Mr. McDonald, is Ms. Mitchell interpreting those text messages correctly? After 18 months of putting money into this account, me, on each, we had $7,200 in there. $14,400 yes. that you all had saved together. Yes. Nice. Bravo, bravo. Real nice. You yes. just really have provided a great example on how a family can put money to the side to make a two-year plan and can actually have a nice nest egg. What happened? One of my kids, they had a big opportunity for an activity that they had going on. And I wanted to use the funds for that. When I went to the ATM, my card isn't working. Why is my card not working if it's an account open with my $7,200 in this account? I called the bank to see what's going on with my debit card because that's what I thought. Maybe mm -hmm. my debit card got shut off, whatever the case may have been. They're telling me there's not a bank account for this debit card. Thomas took it upon himself to go to the bank and close the account. Ouch. And took the money out and allegedly had the cash, which I still have, have not seen, and I don't know where he had. Tag your it, Mr. McDonald. Well, see, I just happened to check the account. So I see she's been swiping, swiping, swiping. So that money's not for that. That money is just set aside just for the house, nothing else. Because she has money, she's not broke. Okay, so tell me what you found when you went to the bank or when you discovered based on bank statements. What did you find? She just was swiping unnecessary items. Like Her taking thing, money out? Just taking money out, yeah. So how much was left of the $14,400? Maybe like thirteen fifty, something like that. So, so almost $1,000 yeah, yes, was out of yes, the account. Yes. So I, did you have a conversation with Ms. Mitchell no, to I say... No, I did not. Once I saw that, I just say, look, I'm going to stay, on, stay focused. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this money aside, put it up, where she can't touch it. Okay, Mr. McDonald, help me to understand how you think you taking the money out is any different 
from her using portions of the money for other items. And a hush fell over Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. How's it different, sir? The account is in my name. <laughs> but you and Ms. Mitchell had an agreement that it was a joint account. Am I right yeah. or wrong about yes, that? Yes, you're right. So half that money was legitimately hers, correct? Yeah. Yes. And so half that money is yours? Correct. So with half the money being hers, what made you think that you all did not need to have a family conversation since you made a family decision to save it? Why do you make a family decision to communicate how it was going to be spent? I should have. That's my fault. I should have. I just took it on myself. Figured she's just young and just out shop. So I just took it all. Uh, Miss Mitchell, not controlling, Ms. but I just took it all. I said, "Look, we're going to stay on the path." Ma'am, I was not shopping. I paid for the maintenance for my vehicle. I don't care if you paid for your nails. If he had a problem with it, you have a conversation about it. Somebody come home from work, somebody says, baby, we need to have a conversation because we made a decision on how we want to use this money. Are we changing how we're going to use this money? Because I'm discovering that there's small amounts being taken out and that's not what we agreed mm -hmm. on. That is a legitimate conversation that grown people have. And Mr. McDonald, Miss Mitchell may be younger than you, mm -hmm. but she not 12. She can understand what I just said. Miss Mitchell, did that make sense? Most definitely. Yes, Your Honor. And you shouldn't have been taking it out to maintain your vehicle if that was not the agreement. Okay. So, remember when I congratulated you earlier on making that financial plan? This is an element of financial planning that you all have to do so that you don't have conflict. The text message said, when can I see you again? And when will you be in the tri-state area again? That's not somebody you fixing somebody Wi-Fi at a front desk. Oh, that's kind of inappropriate. Okay. Uh-oh. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Where's the money now? I have it at the house. Okay, and I'm going to advise, regardless of what happens in this courtroom, that the two of you go directly home and take that money and put it in a bank account and set it up as a joint account so that you both can access it when you want to together. So you can set the circumstances up, the manner in which you can use it. But a communication between the two of you has to happen. And one of you cannot arbitrarily and independently take money from that account. Because you both have been wrong in that regard. And you doubly wrong to just completely take it on yourself. And I think you both agree with me on that, looking in hindsight. Financial, we just resolve. But this emotional connection sounds like it's going to take a little bit more work. Miss Mitchell? I've been finding things um, in Thomas's phone that are not how a fiancé is supposed to be moving. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I don't go through phones, but lately Thomas has been cutting his phone off when he goes to sleep. He's never done that before, and people are tied to a ritual. Mm -hmm. So when he started turning his phone off, I'm not understanding why are you turning the phone off. Mr. McDonald, are you trying to follow what my friend Ariana Huffington says and put your phone to bed at night, or are you doing it for a different reason? No, I'm just putting it to bed. Nah, you, you, are you just putting it <laughs> yeah, to I'm bed? I'm just putting it to bed, yes. All right, so see, he's following Ariana's general thoughts that we must put our phone to bed so that we can all go to sleep at night. But you say that's not what... No, nah, that ain't it. When Thomas got in the shower, he left his phone on the nightstand. And I picked it up and I went through. Okay, Inspector Gadget. Here we Most go definitely. Again. Mm -hmm. Because if something is telling me to do it, it's a reason why. So I'm gonna find what I'm looking for. I go through the phone and I see a text message from a New Jersey number. And Thomas does work out of town. He does fly to New Jersey a couple times a year and, you know, works out of town. So I didn't really think anything of it. But when I started going through the messages, I saw the conversation kind of going back and forth too frequently. Yes. And I saw emojis being used that you should be using those emojis with me. Right. 
So when I asked Thomas about it, because I'm definitely going to ask, okay. and I asked him about it, and he told me that it was a colleague from work. I'm not understanding why you're texting a colleague from work with the emojis that you're using. And I completely understand that, because there are signs of emotional cheating and social media cheating and physical cheating. Yes. And one of the big signs of social media cheating is the exchanging of sexual innuendo emojis, text messages that are overly flirty. Yes. That's one of the first signs. So I would come on over to Mr. McDonald and say, um, is Ms. Mitchell interpreting those text messages correctly? No, she's not. I just met the young lady working in Jersey. She was at the front desk. So I was putting up the internet in, so she wanted to know how about going out and get her Wi-Fi put in. So that's the only reason I have her number. Because it's not even saved. Because if I wanted to, I was liking her like that, I would have put a, num a name in. So it's just a number. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's not serious. She just blew it out. Blew it all out of proportion like she always does. Okay, Ms. Mitchell? The text message said, when can I see you again? And another message that was in the phone said, when will you be in the tri-state area again? That's not somebody you fixing somebody Wi-Fi at a front desk. Oh, that's kind of inappropriate. Okay. Uh-oh. Why, why are you making plans to meet up with the front desk manager lady again? I just figured this follow-up, this follow-up to get the... Wait, follow-up follow to follow find up out? To get a, get a yeah. internet service put up. Excuse me, uh... <laughs> Wi-Fi. Maybe the password change. I don't know. But, Mr. McDonald, that sounds a little shady. But he just said that there was no further communication, but you just said you had to follow up. This is my issue. When I ask something, I don't get a truthful response or response at all. It's always a question with a question. I never get an answer. Just like New Year's, we're in the car. We had a great time. Great time. We haven't had a great time in a long time. We had a great time, went out, enjoyed ourselves. And we're riding in a car, and all of a sudden, a call comes through on his phone. But his phone is hooked up to the Bluetooth. Of course. This man almost took us off the cliff trying to hang up his phone. When I look over at him, I'm... I don't know Thomas to have anxiety, PTSD, any of that. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on with him at this very moment behind his wheel, if I'm safe. So, as he hangs up the call, the call comes right back through. He hung it up faster than he did the first time. When I asked him about it, of course, it's a colleague. A colleague is not calling you at 1 a.m. over and over again. On New Year's Eve? On New Year's... Well, New Year's now, New Year's Day. Somebody was calling to say Happy New Year. To have happy New Year's, because they didn't get the Happy New Year's kiss. Somebody was calling to say Happy New Year. I can tell you what that was about. Again, Mr. McDonald, tag your it. What that happened? was not what it was about. See, this is the first time we've been out, just me and her, with no drama. Right. So I didn't want any interruption. It didn't matter who was calling. Got it. it was nothing more important than I'm me and not her mad at you. Time. I'm not so mad I'm at not you for hanging it up. Calls. I'm not mad at you for hanging it up, no matter what. That actually, that was probably the smartest thing you could have done was making sure you hung it up. But was there a reason, Mr. McDonald, that you had to hang it up? See, here we're trying to get to the core of what the issue is. If there is something going on that is making your fiancé not trust you, then you probably need to address it so that you can rebuild that trust. Because she doesn't trust you. Ms. Mitchell, am I correct? Most definitely. She's not trusting you. What has happened in this relationship to break down that trust, sir? Next time on Divorce Court. And then I see a voice message came through and I picked it up. And it's a woman's tone and she's talking sexually and it's like a poem or something that she's saying to him. You submitted it to court. I did. So I lick every drop of moisture unfolded by your fingers that you place in the middle and down my spine as we align, room filled with the aromas of lust. That was in your phone? I hadn't even heard it. You sought out who this woman was. I did, and I called her. And more importantly, we know who she is. I would like to speak with Danielle via Skype. We went out to dinner. It told me that he was just getting out of a relationship. Is this a romantic relationship, sir? Mm -hmm. 
made in Georgia.